Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video. Would you believe I've never flown Singapore Airlines before? And today I'm getting to do it for the very first time. I'm heading to Singapore on the first leg of a multi-leg journey with them all the way to Los Angeles. I'm flying in business class on the Airbus A380 from Delhi. Come with me and enjoy the video. So, welcome to Delhi. As you've seen from recent videos, this trip was a round-the-world itinerary that took place just as COVID was becoming a global concern. In fact, India closed its borders three days after this video was shot, and Singapore did so about two weeks later. Anyway, this trip was in business class, and one of the stranger perks you get in Delhi with a business class ticket is the use of a special immigration desk to get to your exit stamp. Notice the normal lanes here, marked off with tape, and the business class lane here has red ropes. The airport was pretty quiet. This was an evening flight leaving at 9.45 and there's not a huge amount to do here at Terminal 3, although there is an Irish bar here. Mind you, I'm not really sure what qualifies it as an Irish bar, if I'm honest. Singapore Airlines has a Silver Chris lounge here. There are, or at least were, two daily flights. One at 9.55am and the one I'm taking at 9.45pm. So the lounge never has more than one plane load to cater for at once, and it's a modest size, being a windowless room up a few levels from the main concourse. All lounges are glorified waiting rooms in one respect or another, and this is not exactly Singapore Airlines' most aspirational lounge, but it does the job just fine with some good food on offer, like a mutton rogan josh and gulab jamun, which is a very sweet Indian donut soaked in honey. It's delicious. Overall, not a bad lounge, but keep your expectations modest. Just as I'm walking to the gate here in Delhi, I've had a really weird thought, and I don't know why I've never thought this before, but pretty much everything that we all do online uh, with travel is, is all digitized, uh, from boarding passes to buying the tickets, to your online banking that gives the airline the money. Everything is uh, digitalized, everything is online, everything is made up of ones and zeros, except for this. Uh, this little passport and we all have one and it's the only part of the travel process I think that is still in hard copy analog format in every country in the world. Kind of a weird thought really that I can't really do anything with all that digital stuff that I do online, buying the tickets with my online bank accounts, getting the e-tickets through my email. Can't do any of that without a little book here. It's funny editing that piece of footage because even as we enter the previously unforeseen world of vaccine passports for coronavirus, these are also likely to be digitized too. Here's our Airbus A380 for the trip to Singapore. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas. But Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. So here we go off to Singapore on the A380. It's about five hours in business class. Then, then, then. 
business class business to the class end. Through to the end Singapore Airlines has several configurations of A380. Ours has first class suites on the lower deck and all of the business class seats are on the upper deck, along with a handful of rows of economy class. This A380 also features the older business class seats, which we'll see in a moment. They're being phased out in favour of these newer seats. I had my boarding pass scanned at the gate and as you saw, someone else on the jet bridge checked me again. And now we have a third check. Thanks very much. You need us in the picture? No, I'm okay, thank you. I'm just taking pictures of the seat. <laughs> so how was that stay in Delhi? This seat is massive. Check out the extra space you get over a regular seat by seeing where the seat belt ends. It's a seriously impressive seat and quite remarkable this is considered an obsolete product by Singapore Airlines. I really don't like short overnight flights and I try to avoid them where I can. So why am I on board in the first place? Well, you see, I really wanted to try the brand new business class on Singapore's 777-300 that flies from Singapore to Los Angeles via Tokyo. But you try getting a price for that as a one way. If you start from Delhi and take this extra flight, you're able to halve the price. Remember that airlines don't charge you what it costs to carry you, they charge you what you're willing to pay. And India is a hot spot for low fares to North America. We had a short ground delay here at Delhi, during which I managed to discover this seat actually has two headphone jacks, not something I've ever noticed on an airline seat before. The bonus of being on the top deck of the A380 is the excellent side storage bins which are fitted there. The fuselage curves so much you can't squeeze seats in right by the walls, so the dead space is given over to these pretty spacey bins, which will take a small rucksack or a laptop bag very easily. Singapore also supplies socks, slippers and an eye mask, although not pyjamas. More on that in the next video. It's time to go. Keep your feet flat on the floor and heels towards your seat. If you can't reach the seat in front of you, lower your head and lean forward as far as you can. Place your hands on top of your head. In an emergency evacuation, floor level lighting will lead you to your nearest exit.
It's a bit mad that I could tell you this seat was brand new and most of you would believe me, but it is in fact actually eight years old and still in great condition. It has few weaknesses and an array of great little cubbies for storage and some cool flip out parts on the seat back revealing yet more surprises like a small vanity mirror and a cup holder. As part of the in-flight amenities, there are these pretty solid headphones, although I wouldn't get much of a chance to watch anything on the screens. This flight is 2,577 miles and takes just 5 hours and 15 minutes to fly. And with this also being my chance to catch up on sleep, I had to use my time wisely. Still, there's always time for dinner. Singapore Airlines catering is arguably the best in the world, and the array of choice is just astonishing. There's also a Book the Cook online ordering feature I'll explain in detail in the next Singapore review, but for now just be astonished at the huge array of options in the paper menu. The coffee is brilliant by the way, there's a proper machine in the galley and look at all those different types of tea. The food was very good, a solid 9 out of 10 and I stayed true to the ideals of travel by choosing an Indian main course, a mutton biryani which isn't in the menu but was rather ordered online. It was excellent and the cherry cheesecake to finish was also great. After a nightcap of a glass of water and chocolate, the crew made up my bed while I visited the bathroom. The in-flight safety video gives an idea as to how they do this, and I have to say, the mattress topper on top of this very wide bed is a real winner. You do have to sleep diagonally, but this leaves loads of space for your arms, which is great if you sleep on your side. It's a great bed, and I managed to get an efficient three hour nap, and was awoken as we were about to descend into Singapore. The coffee was like a cold slap to the face and just what I needed to navigate Shanghai Airport before dawn. The approach into Singapore always gives a great view of the Singapore Strait, which is always chock full of boat traffic.
Overall, a splendid flight. I never really looked forward to horrible red-eye flights, but I managed to get enough rest and try enough of the hospitality to be satisfied. I've wanted to tick off a Singapore A380 for a while, and I was really impressed with the efficient service and how prompt and quick the crew were, even letting me sleep until we were about to begin our descent to maximize my rest. Singapore Airlines is a world leader in flying well, and while this video has been about their efficiency and speed, the next one features 18 hours of flying, three full meals and their newest seat, as well as a bonus stop in Tokyo for good measure. Don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.